So for proteins in general, you have your protein, uh, which is labeled as P, which binds to your ligand L in a specific binding site. And this forms your PL complex, which is just your protein bound to your ligand. Uh, there's two theories for how this works. The lock and key method, where the ligand and the protein binding site have the same conformation and fit together perfectly. And then there's the induced fit model, where the binding site has a general conformation that matches the ligand, but can change its shape to fit it. And that's the theory that has been accepted as how this process works. Uh, so for this reaction, you have your Ka, which is the rate of your forward reaction, and that's a second order process, so it has units of uh, 1 over molarity times seconds, and your reverse reaction has your rate of Kd, which is first order and has units of 1 over seconds. So for your forward reaction, your equilibrium constant Ka is equal to your products over your reactants, which is the concentration of your protein ligand complex divided by the concentration of your protein times the concentration of your ligand individually. So this kind of relates to uh, theta, which is your fraction of the binding sites that are occupied, which is equal to the concentration of your protein ligand complex divided by the concentration of that complex plus the concentration of your protein by itself. And so you can relate these two by rearranging the equilibrium equation to solve for the PL rather than the Ka, and you get that PL equals Ka times the concentration of P times the concentration of L. And you can substitute this into the theta equation and simplify that further to get that theta equals the concentration of your ligand over the concentration of your ligand plus 1 over Ka. And so if you plot this, it forms a hyperbolic function, which uh, determines your affinity of the ligand for the binding site. And so you plot this with your, the concentration of your ligand versus the theta. And as you can see here, uh, complex Y has a higher binding affinity than complex X. So as you can see, when you add more ligand, product Y will bind more quickly to the site and thus have more of its uh, binding sites filled more quickly than X. And so a relationship to get from this is that the theta at 0.5 is where your ligand complex is equal to 1 over Ka or your Kd, which is your equilibrium for the reverse reaction. And these are how you determine your binding affinities. So a small Kd or a large Ka will equal a higher binding affinity for the ligand and the complex. Related to this theta is the idea of cooperativity between binding sites. So this is when you have a protein with multiple binding sites that work uh, somewhat allosterically. And the theory is that when you have the binding of a ligand to one site, it affects the affinity either positively or negatively for the other binding sites. And this is shown through the Hill equation here, which is the log of theta over one minus theta equals uh, script n times the log of your concentration of the ligand minus the log of your Kd, which is the equip equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction. And as you can see, this uh, kind of looks like a linear model. And so your n is the number of theoretical binding sites that are filled in your protein and is your slope of the graph. So when you graph this, you graph it as the log of your concentration of ligand versus the log of theta over 1 minus theta. And this graph's straight lines, as you can see here, and the slope of each of these is actually n sub h, which is your cooperativity coefficient. And this isn't equal to n from the equation, because the n from the equation is the theoretical number of sites filled, but n sub h is going to be slightly less because uh, it's the actual cooperativity of this protein. And so an NH that equals 1 means there's no cooperativity between two binding sites. NH uh, that's greater than 1 indicates positive cooperativity between binding sites, so binding to 1 will increase the affinity of the other. And your NH that's less than 1 is going to be negative cooperativity between the sites, so binding to 1 
will reduce the affinity for another site. And so you can trace these lines and it'll form a sigmoidal curve like this. And so if you have a protein that only has one binding site, so it has no cooperativity of any sort, it's going to trace a straight line in the first place like this. For this cooperativity, there are two models that the proteins are based off of. One is the concerted model, or MWC, and one is the sequential model. So for the concerted model, you have two states, a bound and an unbound state for your protein, and they're all identical uh, at all times. So these states, these sites all change at one time when you bind your ligands. Uh, the thing about this is, though, that they're at an equilibrium with each other, and this equilibrium shifts based on how much of the ligand you have bound to your protein. And so usually how this works is that with cooperative binding, your equilibrium will shift towards the products the more ligands that you bind to it. With the sequential model, the binding of ligands to a binding site will cause the other sites to begin to shift to their bound state uh, slowly over time, and they don't all shift completely at once. Uh, there's many pathways that this occurs at and they're all at different equilibriums with each other based on the binding of one site affecting one or more of the others. And most proteins actually involve a combination of these two models.